Half-dressed women make it difficult for me to concentrate. Well, then don't. Ever find yourself shaking your head at Hollywood's latest scandal, thinking, what the hell is going on here? Unfortunately, it seems that the movie business has attracted scandal since its birth. You know something? It just occurred to me. I've done nothing but talk since you got here. That's right. Number 20. Fatty Arbuckle's Chilling Story Meet Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, a colossal star of the early silent era. His influence on Hollywood was immense with luminaries like Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton acknowledging his impact on their own careers. Arbuckle's movies were a guaranteed box office hit, drawing massive crowds to theaters. However, the glittering facade of his success crumbled when tragedy struck at a party he attended. At the ill-fated gathering, a woman fell seriously ill and later succumbed to her condition in the hospital. What followed was a nightmarish turn of events that would forever tarnish Arbuckle's reputation. He was accused of rape and manslaughter, and the sensationalism-hungry press went into a frenzy. Shockingly, headlines claimed Arbuckle had used his weight to crush the woman, coupled with the grotesque assertion that he had assaulted her with a Coke bottle. Two juries grappled with the case but failed to reach a verdict. It wasn't until the third trial that Arbuckle was acquitted. The jury went beyond exoneration, expressing their belief in his innocence, stating, there was not the slightest proof adduced to connect him in any way with the commission of a crime. However, the damage was already done. The media's ruthless condemnation had taken its toll. Arbuckle's films were pulled from cinemas, and he found himself ostracized in Hollywood. Despite the acquittal, he couldn't secure work, and his once flourishing career came to an abrupt and unjust end. The press had transformed him from a beloved star into the most hated man in America. Desperate to make a comeback, Arbuckle returned to film under an alias directing movies in an attempt to distance himself from the scandal. His brief resurgence was a far cry from the success he once enjoyed. While Hollywood moved forward, Arbuckle lived under a cloud of suspicion and animosity. If Arbuckle's account is to be believed, he was a gentleman who briefly aided an unwell girl at a party. His life became a nightmare as the press portrayed him as a vicious sexual predator. Imagine spending months watching your reputation crumble, unjustly, becoming the object of hatred across the nation. For those curious about Arbuckle's talent and charm, a short film he wrote, directed, and starred in provides a glimpse. Clocking in at just seven minutes, the film showcases his impeccable timing and character portrayal, although he is momentarily overshadowed by the rising star Buster Keaton, a testament to Keaton's unparalleled talent. Number 19. Joan Crawford's Adult Film Moving on to the scandalous world of Hollywood, we unravel the intriguing tale of Joan Crawford, an iconic star of MGM during Hollywood's golden era. Known for her ambition and sometimes ruthless pursuit of success, Crawford soared to stardom, earning an Oscar for her leading role in Mildred Pierce in 1945 and multiple nominations and awards. However, her glittering career took an unexpected twist with persistent rumors that she had started in the industry with roles in adult films particularly one titled Velvet Lips. The irony of such whispers surrounded a Hollywood golden girl like Crawford is hard to miss. The alleged film became the center of a scandal, with Crawford's brother reportedly offering copies to the highest bidder. Strangely, there are no surviving copies of Velvet Lips, leading to speculation that studio fixers might have intervened to prevent embarrassment to the star. Adding another layer to the controversy, Crawford's first husband, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., confirmed that she was blackmailed over these alleged films, even receiving threatening calls during their honeymoon. A film was sent to the studio, but the company lawyer denied the woman in question was Crawford. Throughout her life, Crawford vehemently denied any involvement in adult films. However, her FBI file, linked to the McCarthy era, seems to tell a different story. Biographers claim the file contains evidence of compromising footage of Crawford circulating for exclusive men-only stag parties. The plot thickens as rumors suggest the studio may have paid Crawford's brother a substantial sum, up to $100,000, to prevent him from releasing the film. Mysterious payments made by Crawford to the studio are speculated to be compensation for this alleged blackmail money. Crawford's personal struggles didn't end with her life. Following her death, her daughter, disinherited by Crawford, penned a revealing memoir titled Mommy Dearest, shedding a new light on the star's persona. 
The pages of the memoir exposed a tumultuous relationship and added another layer to the complex legacy of Joan Crawford. Number 18. Errol Flynn was troubled. Errol Flynn had a large sexual appetite, and that's no secret. The phrase, in like Flynn, was popularized after his trial for the statutory rape of two girls. Flynn was acquitted of all charges, and the trial only increased his reputation as a Lothario. Flynn began his Hollywood career after working as a river guide for a film crew, fighting off crocodiles and dodging arrows from headhunters. Apparently true. He was spotted and offered a role in a remake of Mutiny on the Bounty. In addition to Flynn's predilection for underage girls, other rumors followed him around. It is said that he lost his virginity at age 10. He had a two-way mirror installed in his bedroom and another allegedly in the bathroom. He was famous for his sexual experiments fueled by drink and drugs, but nothing seemed to dampen the public's enthusiasm for him. Flynn died of a heart attack at the age of 50. It is alleged that the coroners at the inquest removed a number of genital warts from the body as souvenirs. Number 17. Jean Harlow's Forced Marriage Let's take a look at the turbulent life of the original blonde bombshell, Jean Harlow. Her rise to stardom came after a notable appearance in Howard Hughes' Hell's Angels. However, behind the glamour, Harlow's life was marked by a series of tumultuous events. At the tender age of 15, Harlow entered into her first marriage, which ended in divorce after just a few years. The shadows of tragedy continued to follow her when her second husband met his demise in a gunshot accident, with speculations lingering about Harlow's involvement. Adding fuel to the gossip mill, Harlow became entangled in a scandalous affair with a married boxer. Fearing the potential damage to her public image, the studio intervened, orchestrating a forced marriage to cinematographer Harold Rosen. This union, however, was merely for show, and the couple quietly divorced a few months later when the scandal subsided. Harlow's heart, it seemed, belonged elsewhere. She harbored a desire to marry William Powell, whom she fell for in 1935 on the set of Reckless. Dreaming of a married life, a family, and an exit from acting, Harlow faced a roadblock. Powell, recently divorced from Carol Lombard, hesitated, fearing public backlash for another quick marriage. Moreover, he made it clear that he never wanted children. Despite Powell's caution, fate took its course, and Harrow found herself expecting. Caught between her longing for a family and Powell's reluctance, she made a heart-wrenching decision. Aware of Powell's aversion to parenthood and the studio's intolerance for unmarried mothers, Harlow chose to undergo an abortion in secret, withholding this painful truth from Powell. Number 16. Alfred Hitchcock's Obsession Let's explore the enigmatic and peculiar side of Alfred Hitchcock. While his genius in filmmaking was undeniable, his personal quirks and obsessions cast a shadow over his illustrious career. Despite being married for an impressive 54 years, Hitchcock claimed to have engaged in sexual activity only once. However, this didn't preclude him from developing intense fixations on his leading ladies. Actresses like Grace Kelly and Janet Leigh voiced complaints about his controlling nature. Hitchcock restricted them from conversing with other cast members and insisted on driving them to the set personally. The apex of Hitchcock's obsession manifested with Tippi Hedren during the filming of The Birds. Fresh from the success of Psycho, Hitchcock selected the relatively unknown actress Hedren for the lead role. While this propelled her to stardom, it also tethered her to a contract that left her vulnerable. On the set, Hitchcock went to extreme lengths to isolate Hedren. He forbade other cast members from interacting with her or even touching her. Simultaneously, he fed her misinformation claiming that her co-stars disliked her. Hedren became a victim of his advances, which she consistently rebuffed. She later asserted that the infamous scenes where she was attacked by birds were Hitchcock's vindictive retaliation. Contrary to the plan of using mechanical crows, Hitchcock opted for live birds tethered to Hedren with elastic. The distress of the birds resulted in vicious attacks. One particularly harrowing scene, where real birds attacked her in a bedroom, took an agonizing five days to film. When Hedren stood her ground and rebuffed Hitchcock's advances, the director's retaliation was ruthless. He decided not to work with her again while also blocking her opportunities with other directors. Even when her work on the birds earned her an award, Hitchcock denied her the time to collect it. Furthermore, 
he allegedly actively campaigned against her, thwarting any chance of an Oscar nomination for her role. While Hedren continued her career, the ordeal took a toll, and her trajectory never fully recovered from the impact of Hitchcock's vindictive actions. Number 15. Elizabeth Taylor's Ultimate Betrayal During her time, Elizabeth Taylor was a queen of scandal. With a remarkable eight marriages, Taylor's romantic escapades were a constant source of headlines. However, one particular affair stands out as the ultimate betrayal. After the tragic death of her third husband in a plane crash during the late 1950s, Taylor found herself entangled in a scandalous love affair with none other than Eddie Fisher. Fisher, also an actor, was the husband of Taylor's close friend and fellow actress, Debbie Reynolds. The couple shared two children, one of them being the iconic Carrie Fisher of Star Wars fame. The fallout from Taylor and Fisher's affair was explosive, leading to the dissolution of Fisher and Reynolds' marriage. Taylor and Fisher, in turn, tied the knot, marking the beginning of a tumultuous five-year marriage. However, Taylor's penchant for scandal didn't end there. She embarked on yet another affair, this time with Richard Burton, a relationship that would see them married and divorced not once, but twice. The turbulence of her love life added spice to the tabloids and kept the public hooked. Interestingly, while both Taylor and Fisher initially faced the wrath of the press, only Fisher's career suffered long-term consequences due to the notorious affair. Taylor and Reynolds, on the other hand, continued their ascent to A-list stardom. In a surprising turn of events, Taylor and Reynolds eventually reconciled in 1966, spurred by a chance encounter on a cruise line. Number 14. Ingrid Bergman's Italian Job In the late 1940s, Ingrid Bergman had become a household name in the U.S., celebrated for her talent and honored with an Academy Award for Best Actress for her role in Gaslight. The public adored her for her natural charm and clean-cut image, but her reputation took a dramatic turn in 1950 when she decided to collaborate with Italian director Roberto Rossellini. Bergman, an admirer of Rossellini's work, reached out to him in 1949, expressing her desire to work together. This led to being cast in Rossellini's volcano film, Stromboli. However, as the cameras rolled, a clandestine affair unfolded between the two, despite both being married. While extramarital affairs were not uncommon in Hollywood at the time, the public was scandalized by Bergman's involvement in such a controversy. The news of the affair, when discovered, made headlines. If even juicier detail that shocked America, Bergman was pregnant with Rossellini's child. In an instant, Bergman's pristine reputation crumbled. Film offers, brand deals, and studio connections in the U.S. vanished, leaving her in professional freefall. The moralistic values of the 1950s played a significant role in her downfall, compounded by the fact that her film roles had shaped a perception of her as a virtuous, almost angelic figure incapable of such salacious behavior. People saw me in Joan of Arc and declared me a saint. I'm not. I'm just a woman, another human being, Bergman later lamented of the public's harsh judgment. With her options dwindling in the U.S. and little incentive to return to a public that now loathed her, Bergman made the decision to stay in Italy with Rossellini after the affair became public. The one thing that might have drawn her back was her daughter, Pia, but Bergman's husband, Peter Lindstrom, made that prospect challenging by refusing to grant a divorce for almost a year. The aftermath of the affair was marked by a vicious custody battle, leveraging Bergman's residence in Italy and effective exile from the U.S. against her. As a result, she didn't see her daughter Pia for seven years. Number 13. Clark Gable and Loretta Young In the glittering world of Hollywood's golden age, where stars shone bright and secrets lurked in the darkness, one scandal remained concealed for decades, Clark Gable and Loretta Young's illicit affair. Loretta Young, renowned for her beauty and talent, harbored a dark secret that she took to her grave. In 1935, during the filming of Call of the Wild, Young forged a close connection with the charismatic Clark Gable who, at the time, was married to Maria Rhea Franklin Prentice Lucas Langham. The aftermath of their on-screen chemistry birthed a shocking revelation that would remain hidden for years. The cover-up began when Young discovered she was pregnant shortly after the film wrapped. Determined to shield her unborn child from the prying eyes of the public, Young, a devout Catholic with a strong moral compass, embarked on an elaborate plan to conceal the truth. 
Little did the world know that the paternity of her daughter, Judy, held a secret darker than the glitziest Hollywood mysteries. It wasn't until Young's daughter-in-law, Linda Lewis, came forward that the full extent of the story emerged. Lewis revealed that Young, at the age of 85, confided in her about the true nature of the pregnancy. According to Lewis, Young disclosed that the pregnancy resulted from a traumatic event, a rape at the hands of Clark Gable. The revelation unfolded during an episode of Larry King Live, where the topic of date rape was discussed. Young, seeking clarification from Lewis, was met with heart-wrenching realization that her own experience aligned with the definition. Lewis recounted Young's horrified response, emphasizing that Young's priority remained protecting Judy. The fear of Judy being hurt by the revelation kept the family silent for years, even after Judy's death in 2011 at the age of 78. However, driven by a desire to honor Young's wishes, Lewis and her husband Chris, Loretta Young's son with her second husband Tom, decided to bring the hidden truth into the light. In an interview with BuzzFeed, Lewis expressed the family's motivation for breaking their silence. Judy is not here to be hurt by this, and that's what Loretta really wanted to avoid, because who doesn't want to be conceived in love? When Young, a devout Catholic who had experienced the pain of divorce, met Gable in 1935, she was considered one of Hollywood's brightest stars. Despite her inclination to fall a little bit in love with co-stars, she had never succumbed to advances from her colleagues. However, a train journey changed the course of her life. Gable and Young, given separate compartments, found themselves entangled in a secret affair between Seattle and Los Angeles. A month later, Young discovered she was pregnant. The elaborate cover-up included Gable's omission from the birth certificate, ensuring he had no one real involvement in Judy's life. Young, despite her efforts to shield the secret, revealed the truth to her daughter when she turned 23. By then, Gable had passed away at the age of 59, just 10 days after suffering a heart attack. Judy, however, never learned the real circumstances behind her conception until Lewis chose to discuss it prompted by the prevalence of high-profile historic rape cases. I realize that it's almost every day, she told BuzzFeed. All these rapes, and the men just keep getting away with it. Number 12. Maureen O'Hara, Caught in Action In the enchanting era of the 1940s, Maureen O'Hara graced the silver screen, etching her name in Hollywood history with timeless classics like Miracle on 34th Street. However, in November 1953, the Irish beauty found herself thrust into the scandalous spotlight, courtesy of a sensational story in the gossip magazine Confidential. The tale spun by Confidential alleged that O'Hara was caught in a compromising position, necking, kissing someone, while attending a movie at the illustrious Grauman's Chinese Theater. According to the magazine, the escapade escalated to the point where O'Hara and her mysterious companion were purportedly ejected for crossing the boundaries of acceptable behavior. This scandalous revelation was a stark contrast to O'Hara's established clean-cut image, and she was not willing to let it tarnish her reputation. Seizing the opportunity for justice, O'Hara joined forces with the state of California, which was already pursuing confidential for its controversial reporting style. The legal battle unfolded in 1957, marking a turning point for both O'Hara and the Notorious magazine. In her defense, O'Hara presented her passport, a compelling piece of evidence that proved she wasn't even in the country when the alleged necking incident took place. Despite this, the jury faced difficulty reaching a unanimous decision, leading to a hung jury declaration. While the legal proceedings didn't significantly impact O'Hara's thriving career, it signaled the beginning of the end for Confidential. Confidential's readership dwindled over the years, and the magazine that thrived on sensationalism eventually succumbed, publishing its final issue, in 1978. Number 11. Marilyn Monroe and the Kennedys In the glittering world of Hollywood's golden age, Marilyn Monroe, the quintessential blonde bombshell, wielded her sexuality as a potent tool, garnering both fame and fortune. Yet her romantic entanglements often thrust her into the spotlight of controversy. Monroe, wed to baseball luminary Joe DiMaggio and esteemed playwright Arthur Miller, navigated a tumultuous personal life while engaging in liaisons with notable figures, including the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. 
The rumors of Monroe's affair with JFK gained traction when she serenaded the commander-in-chief at his 45th birthday celebration. At that juncture, Monroe's life was in disarray. Three marriages, struggles with drugs and alcohol, and a career-facing challenges. Whispers suggested that Monroe's dalliances extended beyond John to his brother, Robert. Speculations heightened with rumors of a planned press conference where Monroe intended to reveal these affairs. However, tragedy struck when she was discovered lifeless in Los Angeles in 1962, a victim of a barbiturate overdose at the tender age of 36. Number 10. Mae West slash Jane Mast When reminiscing about the luminaries of Hollywood's golden age, Mae West stands tall as an iconic figure. A titan of the American stage and screen, West's career courted controversy, largely due to her status as a sex symbol. One significant scandal unfolded when she penned and starred in the play Sex. Despite its lack of nudity or explicit content, the production faced severe criticism for its sexual politics, with audiences struggling to see beyond West's provocative image to grasp the deeper themes of the play. The pinnacle of this controversy occurred one evening after a sold-out performance when West found herself arrested by the police backstage. Charged with corrupting the morals of youth, she was sentenced to 10 days in jail. However, West's indomitable spirit prevailed, and she served only eight days, with two knocked off for good behavior. Far from damaging her career, the incident proved a boon as West skillfully leveraged the controversy. Number 9. The Garbo Dietrich Affair In the tumultuous world of 1930s Hollywood, Two iconic actresses, Marlene Dietrich and Greta Garbo, emerged as international sensations, capturing the hearts of audiences worldwide. Dietrich's breakthrough in the 1930 film The Blue Angel, her first foray into talkies after a string of silent movies in Germany, catapulted her to stardom. Paramount Studios, recognizing her potential, swiftly brought her to Hollywood to rival the reigning silent movie sensation Greta Garbo at MGM. Despite both actresses having traversed the Berlin film industry simultaneously, they publicly denied any encounter. Orson Welles contradicted these claims, asserting he introduced them at a 1945 party. Recent revelations even hint at a torrid affair gone sour. However, when questioned about their rivalry later in life, Garbo cryptically responded, Who is this Marlene Dietrich? In contrast, Dietrich openly expressed more explicit sentiments about her supposed rival. In the conservative landscape of 1920s Hollywood, bisexuality was a taboo subject. To counter swirling rumors of a romantic entanglement, both Garbo and Dietrich vehemently denied ever crossing paths. Despite their denial, both actresses reached the pinnacle of stardom, earning Oscar nominations in the 1930s. Author and film historian Diana McClellan delved into this clandestine chapter unearthing evidence suggesting a potential affair during the filming of the 1925 silent German film, The Joyless Street. Number 8. Charlie Chaplin's Lolita Complex A long time before Leonardo DiCaprio was busy wooing women half his age, silent film actor Charlie Chaplin was busy wooing women way younger than him. He was married four times in total, and all of his wives were young, to say the least. In 1918, when he was 29, he married a 16-year-old teen named Mildred Harris. They were divorced by 1920. Then in 1924, he married 16-year-old Lita Gray, which only lasted three years. As far as we can tell, these marriages lasted just long enough for them to become legal adults. It's terrible. Chaplin took a little break from walking down the aisle for the next decade or so. Then in 1936, he wed actress Paulette Goddard, who was at least in her 20s, though he was in his 40s by then. That one didn't stick either. The fourth time was apparently the charm. In 1943, when Chaplin was 53, he married an 18-year-old named Una O'Neill. She was a legal adult, so that was a step in the right direction, although the age gap had progressed substantially by this point. The man was old enough to be her grandfather. Their marriage lasted until his death in 1977. Then again, if it wasn't scandalous enough for you, Chaplin was also banned from the US in 1952 due to communist leanings and did not return until 1972 to collect an honorary Oscar. He must have been loved by the tabloids. Number 7. Patricia Douglas, the dancer who sued MGM At an MGM party in 1937, 20-year-old Patricia Douglas was brutally attacked and raped. 
and when she tried to get justice, the film studio did everything in its power to silence her. It seems the history of Hollywood is marred with scandal, and its glorious golden era of the early 20th century was no exception. But it would take victim Patricia Douglas 66 years to get the public to fully understand what the industry did to her. In 1937, an MGM salesman raped Douglas, then a 20-year-old dancer at a company party. When Douglas demanded justice, the studio smeared her reputation using bribes, dirty detectives, and perjury. Douglas's career was in tatters, and all because she was victimized by a powerful media mogul. Making it in Hollywood wasn't Patricia Douglas's dream, it was her mother's. Born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1917, Douglas and her mother, Mildred Mitchell, moved to Hollywood when she was still a child. As Mitchell looked for work designing costumes, Douglas tried her hand at dancing. By 1937, Douglas was still living with her mother and picking up small dancing roles posted by major studios like MGM. That was when she was hired alongside 120 dancers for MGM's Wild West show. Douglas assumed the part was for a movie. She had no idea what they really had planned for her. MGM invited salesmen from across the country to a five-day convention to celebrate the studio's depression-busting profits. Co-founder Louis B. Mayer welcomed the salesmen with his dancers, Douglas among them. These lovely girls, and you have the finest of them, greet you, Mayer told his 300 guests. And that's to show you how we feel about you and the kind of a good time that's ahead of you, anything you want. The studio also trucked in 500 cases of scotch and champagne and then gave Douglas a skimpy costume and screen-ready makeup. Then, MGM bust Douglas and the other girls to a remote lot where the party was held. During the party, 36-year-old sales executive David Ross cornered Douglas on the dance floor. She escaped to the restroom, but Ross lurked outside. I've got a man and he's really stickling, Douglas told the restroom attendant. And Douglas wasn't the only woman dealing with a creep, as she described Ross. I'm tired of being mauled, complained 18-year-old Ginger Wyatt. Meanwhile, MGM salesman David Ross would not take no for an answer. He and another man held me down, Patricia Douglas said. One pinched my nose so I'd have to open my mouth to breathe. Then they poured a whole glass full of scotch and champagne down my throat. Oh, I fought, but they thought it was funny. I remember a lot of laughter. Douglas ran to the bathroom and threw up. Then she escaped outside, but Ross followed her. Make a sound, Ross threatened, and you'll never breathe again. After that, Douglas rushed to the Culver City Community Hospital. The experience there traumatized her more. I was given a cold water douche. After that, the doctor examined me. There's no surprise he didn't find anything. The douche had removed all evidence. Douglas didn't know it, but the doctor who treated her was known as the family doctor for MGM. Apparently, the doctor did not think Douglas had been injured. Number 6. Rock Hudson's Hidden Truths In the glitzy realm of 1950s Hollywood, where facades often overshadowed realities, Rock Hudson harbored a secret that defied societal norms of the time. In an era when being gay was taboo, Hudson, a celebrated beefcake of the silver screen, found himself ensnared in the complexities of concealing his true sexuality. Marriage to Phyllis was not a union born out of romantic inclination, but rather a societal expectation, a common refuge for those seeking to allay rumors surrounding their hidden lives. Phyllis, sensing the unspoken truth, employed a Rorschach test, a psychological tool, to delicately broach the subject of Hudson's sexuality. While newspapers of the time refrained from explicitly publishing details about Hudson's same-sex encounters, the whispers persisted. Rock Hudson, confronted with the growing speculation, eventually acknowledged his relationships with men during his marriage to Phyllis. However, certain aspects of his private life remained undisclosed. According to private investigator Fred Otash, Hudson vehemently denied engaging in casual encounters with men, particularly refuting claims of picking up strangers in bars. Beyond the challenges of navigating the societal constraints of his time, Rock Hudson bore another burden that cemented his legacy. He became one of the first celebrities to be diagnosed with HIV or AIDS, a diagnosis that would, tragically, claim his life. Number 5. The Dark Side of Oz Munchkin While we're basically on the task of ruining your childhood image of favorite classic Hollywood stars, let's talk about one of the most famous films in history, The Wizard of Oz. 
The film, cherished by audiences as a timeless classic, has weathered its share of strange rumors, one of the most infamous being the urban legend of a munchkin hanging himself during a filming, a myth debunked by time. However, beneath the veneer of cinematic magic, Julie Garland's ex-husband, Sid Luft, claimed a more unsettling reality. According to Luft, Garland divulged that many of the little people cast as munchkins were, in his words, little drunks who indulged in nightly revelries after the cameras ceased rolling. The allegations didn't stop at inebriation. Luft contended that these individuals made Garland's life on set miserable by engaging in inappropriate behavior, including intrusive actions under her dress. While one member of the Lottie Pop Guild vehemently denied Luft's assertions, labeling them as untrue and distressing, the veracity of these claims remains shrouded in the mists of time. With Garland no longer present to share her perspective, the behind-the-scenes stories of The Wizard of Oz persist as a mix of whimsy and potential misconduct, leaving a lingering sense of mystery surrounding the iconic film. Number 4. Jerry Lee Lewis Married His Cousin In the vibrant world of rock and roll, scandal often takes center stage, and Jerry Lee Lewis provided a headline-worthy spectacle. The controversial twist? His third marriage, which ignited a firestorm of public condemnation, not for familial ties, but for the shocking age difference. In 1958, Jerry Lee Lewis exchanged vows with his third spouse, Myra Gale Brown. The scandal wasn't rooted in the familial connection. Myra was Lewis's first cousin once removed, the daughter of his cousin J.W. Brown. Instead, the uproar stemmed from the vast age gap, with Lewis at 22 and Myra a mere 13 years old. While society recoiled at the apparent impropriety, the couple faced the harsh spotlight together. Myra reflected on the enduring impact of the scandal, noting, It was something that marked Jerry for life. We kept thinking every year, every six months, that it was going to go away. We're going to stop talking about it, and it just didn't happen. But it brought me and Jerry very close, and we had ten incredible, wonderful years together after that. Jerry Lee Lewis, often remembered for his musical prowess, found himself entangled in a scandal that echoed through the corridors of both fame and infamy. The whirlwind of controversy surrounding his unconventional marriage to his teenage cousin added a distinctive chapter to the turbulent narrative of rock and roll history. Number 3. Joan Bennett's Husband Shot Her Agent Hollywood has witnessed its fair share of dramatic scandals, and the tale of Joan Bennett, Walter Ranger, and Jennings Lang is no exception. The love triangle unfolded in a gripping saga of jealousy, betrayal, and gunfire, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of Tinseltown history. In 1951, Walter Wanger, a film producer, became increasingly suspicious of his wife Joan Bennett's relationship with her agent, Jennings Lang. Hiring a private investigator to tail the duo, Wanger's worst fears were confirmed as he discovered their rendezvous in various locales. Consumed by jealousy, Wanger reached a boiling point when he spotted Bennett and Lang leaving Lang's agency, MCA, together. Armed with a gun, Wanger confronted the alleged lovers, firing shots in a fit of rage. The bullets found their mark in Lang's groin, resulting in hospitalization for the agent. Joan Bennett, known for her roles in films like Little Women and Scarlet Street, found herself at the epicenter of the scandal. Wanger served four months in jail for his violent outburst and the incident cast a shadow over Bennett's career, leading to a decline in her Hollywood standing. Number 2. Carol Brady's Son Here's a fun story about Carol Brady dating her son, except she didn't, really. Florence Henderson, who played Carol in the beloved 1970s TV show The Brady Bunch, went on a date with Barry Williams, who played her eldest son, Greg, on the show. In his 1992 autobiography, Growing Up Brady, I Was a Teenage Greg, Williams revealed that he was infatuated with his TV mom. When he was 16 and she was 36, they went to a restaurant for dinner. However, it's worth noting that the date ended with a peck on the cheek, at which point Henderson went home to her husband and four kids. I had no idea that his intentions were to date me, Henderson said. It made for a good story, though. Number 1. What Happens After During the 1930s and 1940s, Hollywood bombshells titillated movie fans while frightening conservatives. While studios loved the publicity these women created, they also wanted their female stars to be seen as respectful women 
who weren't having sex out of wedlock or entering into any other kind of unlawful activities. They wanted to capitalize on their stardom as long as they could, meaning when many top stars became pregnant, the studios would advise them to get an abortion for the benefit of their career. Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, Judy Garland, Rita Hayworth, Jean Harlow, and Lana Turner were just some of the many actresses persuaded to have an abortion to keep their film careers on track. A majority of these events were organized by the studio, which tried to keep them out of the spotlight. And there you have it, the juiciest scandal-filled journey through Hollywood's intimate secrets. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe for more fascinating content. Who knows what scandalous stories we'll uncover next? Stay tuned.